just another example of Catholic hypocrisy and ignorance of scripture. I'm going to play this little clip here from the remnant video, Michael Matt, from this thing here. And um, it's this big thing of uh, the abomination of desolation standing in New York's holy place. <laughs> uh, yeah, St. Paul's Cathedral or something, I guess, and they had these perverts up there and whatever else. And um, so I'm going to play something here to show you the hypocrisy of Roman Catholics. Uh, when you start to talk to Catholics about things, they'll talk about that we have the Holy Church, and they get all this holier-than-thou thing, and, oh, well, we are the true church. We're the ones that created the Bible. We did this. We did that. What about the corruption in your system? Well, you're a heretic. You're the, They don't talk about the corruption in their system. I mean, he does. He talks about the, the corruption, but then he just turns and twists things. We'll see about that as we continue here. Let's watch. 1988, when they first got started. Does anybody out there, whether you're Catholic or not, does anyone understand why this is happening? Does anybody think this is a good idea? He's talking about the Latin Mass being taken out. Um, yeah, it's called the uh, Catholic Church is fake. It's false. It's not Christ's Church. That's why. That's why they're changing and, and getting woke and all the other stuff. And I'll say more about that as, uh, in, here in a little bit. When you see the kinds of scandals that we're all subjected to this. <laughs> it's a okay, there he has this uh, weird freak there, abomination of desolation standing in the holy place. No, actually, the uh, if you actually understand the scripture, that would be the holy place in Jerusalem, the rebuilt third temple, when the Antichrist is going to be standing there, and the Antichrist is not going to look like that. Okay, he's going to be a perfect counterfeit for Jesus Christ, I believe, according to the Catholic paintings um, that you see out there. But now watch watch the comparison that he does here. Okay, you're, you're dealing with transgendered, a man dressed up like a woman, and the, the whole St. Paul's Cathedral here is just filled with these perverts and everything, sodomites, doing all kinds of things that are an abomination to the Lord. And he, watch the comparison he makes and who he compares it to. Watch this. It's a miracle. It's an act of God that there's anybody left in the Catholic Church. Uh, actually, no, it's not an act of God that there's anybody left in the Catholic Church. That's called uh, mind control and brainwashed people that can't leave their system. Right? And Peter Kwasniewski rightly notes about this case in Texas. He says, an enemy hath done this. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Monsters in clerical attire. Savages in black suits. Dry okay, that's all talking about uh, Roman Catholic priests. But watch who he compares it to. Driving the people of God to despair. I said that last week. These are monsters now. They're not just modernists. They're monsters. It's like we're reading right now. We're living through the Elizabethan period of persecution of Catholics. You know, where good priests like Edmund Campion were being killed and wiped out and rounded up. Feels the same, doesn't it? They're just shutting down masses all over the place. Just like <laughs> no, it doesn't. That's not the same thing. I'll talk about the movie clip here in a minute. Like they did then. But these guys, I guess, are too ignorant of history to realize how much to a T they fit the description of the bad guys 500 years ago. Okay, let me stop there. All right, the bad guys 500 years ago. Uh, Catholics. Um, okay, let's just start out with the basics here. First of all, this is a scene from the movie Cromwell. The actor right there is Richard Harris, right? Richard Harris, if you go to Wikipedia or any other thing out there, it's not, I don't, you know, Wikipedia is not the most definitive thing. I get it. But, you know, it's just talking about his life down here, early life. Uh, right here it says he was educated by the Jesuits at Crescent College. He's Jesuit educated. Okay, so uh, you're actually showing a, a papist in that's playing this role of Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell was a good man. But the scene here is not a Catholic church. It's a Puritan church. And if you watch the movie, the guy playing Oliver Cromwell here is mad because they're bringing in popish idolatry to the Puritan church. Catholics are not being persecuted in this scene here. But Michael Matt sees it and says, oh, see, it's the same thing. Oliver Cromwell throwing out graven images and, and all kinds of stuff like that, uh, popish idolatry. That's the same thing as a pervert, a man dressed up as a woman coming in to a Catholic church. Huh? <laughs> okay. And um, what was the problem with the Puritans back then, 500 years ago? 
they saw corruption in the Catholic Church. Martin Luther saw corruption in the Catholic Church. William Tyndale saw corruption in the Catholic Church. John Wycliffe saw corruption in the Catholic Church. John Huss, to go down through the list. They were Protestants seeking to reform Catholicism. They were calling for reformation. Ironically, just like uh, Michael Mattis, he's seeing problems with the Catholic Church. You mean Catholicism has had been having problems for 500 years? No, actually, it's a lot longer than that. This is Christ's church here, and they're, they're having perverts coming in and things and, and uh, sodomy and all kinds of wicked stuff and whatever. Let's see if I can get back to some of the pictures of some of the stuff here. Um, the Catholic guy uh, applauding this stuff and whatever else. All these people... Uh, drag queens and all the other stuff carrying the body of this dead pervert or something, you know, and and uh, there's some kind of a thing with a purple thing around it there or whatever else. And, um, you know, these weird things, but I'm not even going to play this. They're, they're singing, you know, I forget, some kind of modern music or something. We are family or something. Uh, yeah, the Catholic Church is corrupt. It's been corrupt for a long time. But comparing, you know, Oliver Cromwell, what he was doing to transgendered perverts today is really a stretch. Okay, <laughs> but um, I just you'll you'll see this if you ever deal with Catholics. You bring up the pedophilia, the fact that most of the priests in Roman Catholicism right now are sodomites. The fact that Pope Francis just said that you know priests can bless sodomite marriages if they want to. It's up to them. It's up to the inv individual. They just kind of go, oh, well, never mind that. It's the church that Christ founded. It's the church that Christ founded. You, you wouldn't have a Bible if it wasn't for us and all this other stuff, which is nonsense. Um, the first century early Christians, they didn't become Orthodox Christians and they didn't become Catholics. They were called heretics. We've always been called heretics and hunted down by both Catholics and not so much so by the Orthodox, but the Catholics definitely have hunted down and executed heretics. And then, you know, some of the Puritans and things that get over, you know, carried away and they kill a Catholic priest and the Catholics go, oh, we're being persecuted, we're being martyred and all this other stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, the Spanish Inquisition, you know. Oh, well, you know, let's not talk about that. And the fact that I have the Reims New Testament here in my collection, which I've shown in other videos. And um, let me get it real quick here. The original and true Reims New Testament and you know, back to the book of Revelation um, I've showed this thing in so many different studies but I'll read it one more time um, page 557 chapter 17 the commentary and it talks about the whore uh, being drunk with the blood of the martyrs and saints of Jesus and it says the Protestants foolishly expounded of Rome for that there they put heretics to death and allow their punishment in other countries. Um, and it says here on the side, putting heretics to death is not to shed the blood of saints. Um, yeah. Um, but it says, but their blood is uh, not called the blood of saints, no more than the blood of thieves, man killers, and other malefactors, for the shedding of which by order of justice no commonwealth shall answer. So there you have it. Right it there, you can see it in some of my other videos. I just a little screen today at this thing. So I'm not going to show it on camera, but I've shown it in other studies. Um, so yeah, the Roman Catholics have admittedly killed what they call heretics. So uh, they'll come out, and that's one of their favorite attacks. Where was your church at? Where's your church, huh? You're a Protestant. That's all that you are. No, I'm a heretic, actually. I'm not a Protestant. I do protest against things, and I would say that in that sense, yes, I would line up with some of the Protestant stuff. But I'm a heretic. I'm not a Protestant, okay, according to Roman Catholicism. But just thought I'd show that little hypocrisy there of, uh, again, Roman Catholics comparing transgendered perverts to the reformers that were actually trying to clean up the Catholic Church. So, um, I mean, you guys might as well just come out and say that you're Protestant reformers now as well. You're protesting the abuses of Rome as, you know, people have done for ever since Rome was, you know, Roman Catholicism was around, 
um, you know, all the heresies, all the you know schisms and all the other stuff, just fighting all the time. So quit pretending that you guys have it all figured out, that you're the one true church, because you're not. All right? Thank you for watching.